I've recently bought this Ultratronics mainboard, but before I'm going to just shove this in my M3, I want to find out what went wrong in my previous video. It's going to be a challenge on its own. <laughs> Look at the size difference of this big 3-tech and this Ultratronics. <laughs> Hi, I'm John for Proper Printing and in this video I'm going to find out why I blew up my stepper driver. Yeah, I added a flexi drive to my printer and the extruder motor needed to rotate in the other direction and I thought it would be easier to um, yeah, rewire it and boy was I wrong. Holy shit. So yeah, now I have uh, one uh, stepper driver less. I decided to make this extra video uh, in which I'm going to dive deeper into what actually happened. I think I found the cause and it's less convenient than uh, I thought it would be. I've got a lot of comments with uh, suggestions about what could have gone wrong. Also comments of people who um, said they ex had experienced a similar thing. And also a lot of supportive comments of course because it was uh, yeah, a major drama. So thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, I have... Uh, I have the scope here, so it looks like I know what I'm doing and uh, we are going to take a further look into this uh, step driver. Okay, I've got this setup here with this oscilloscope and this uh, power supply. This is a uh, 0 to 30 volt and 0 to 20 amps power supply, so it um, can uh, give a bit of oomph. It's connected to my, uh, my laptop, so I can use a terminal a screen to, um, to send commands to this board. So, and now you can see the stepper motor is rotating and um, everything goes pretty well. And right now the stepper motor holds its, its position and if I put some force on it, you can hear it. So now current is running through that motor to hold it in that steady position. And I can use the G, oh sorry, M18 command. And now it's uh, loose again. So let's test that up. I'm going to show you a bit how this stepper motor works, how we can connect it correctly, and what could have caused uh, the issue. So I have printed some, uh, some schematics of the stepper motor, uh, one page of the data sheet of the stepper driver, and the schematics of the N3 mainboard. I'll put a link to the description where I found these schematics. The schematics of this mainboard has two sheets. One is the, well, the microcontroller power, USB micro SD, and the FETs. And there is one sheet with uh, the four stepper drivers, XYZ and the extruder. But this uh, thing has uh, blown up, so I can't use that one anymore. But I can use these three to uh, do some experiments. This stepper motor driver is through this connector connected directly to the stepper motor. If you want to see what happens in this section here, we can take a look at this schematic. And that's basically this part over here. So if I redraw it, we have 24 volt and it splits itself into two switches and another switch like this. And this is connected through a resistor and this resistor is 0.1 ohms. So what happens if current flows through this resistor, you can measure, measure a voltage over here. So this will go back through the microcontroller and it's uh, the sense. And this actually makes sense. <laughs> Without this, the current isn't uh, read back. So you don't, the, the controller doesn't know if too much current is running through it or not. This is one coil of the stepper motor. This full bridge enables current to flow into both directions of this coil. These switches must be closed and diagonal 
to each other because if these two switches are closed then current just flows wham <laughs> yeah you won't see much of that uh, resistor anymore this gate drive <laughs> prevent that from happening so you can see here at the place of the coil current goes or into this direction or into that direction and this coil together with the magnet um, yeah it results in a repelling or attracting step if we plot this into a graph these two switch polarity and the same goes for the second one and i would like to measure this with the scope and see if this actually happens okay i've connected the oscilloscope to the output to one output of that x stepper i send the command g1 x100 f500 so here we go and what do we see here? Uh, let's see if this looks a bit different if you do it even faster. So instead of 500, let's do it 10 times faster. So again, single. So now with the speed of 5000. And it looks exactly the same. Now, yeah. what is happening here? <laughs> we have to zoom out a bit and do it again with a speed of 500 millimeters per second. And now we have a completely different signal. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the speed of 5000. And you can see that this is much finer. Well, this is where it moved and this is where it stood still. Something funny is happening here and I can show you that using the math function on this thing. Time differential and move the scale. Ah. <laughs> we can see that a sine wave is appearing. This differential operator shows the difference in time. It shows the signal that this motor works with. So what we see here is what's called micro-stepping. The stepper driver uh, uses a PWM signal, means pulse width modulation. And the width of this pulse determines the amount of uh, well energy. So the, the wider the pulse, the more energy, the higher the voltage. Now another cool thing is if we zoom out, what we can see here is the ramp up of the stepper because there is some inertia if you just start sending the steps here then uh, you will miss some steps and if the motor can uh, keep up with it or not the microcontroller doesn't care much so that's different with the feedback loop um those steps i've sent you earlier how are they received well um to be honest we are having difficulties keeping up how do you mean we're having difficulties yeah okay i'm glad i'm hearing this now but um what are we going to do about that maybe we can go a bit slower what goes slower how are we going to reach those deadlines those deadlines are unrealistic system says it can be done within four hours and it takes you six hours to finish yeah. i think there's i need some explanation if here. you go even faster then we will lose even more steps I, I can't help it. Sorry, man. <laughs> but I think you will get the point. Okay, right now I've connected both probes to the stepper motor output. And um, yeah, let's see what happens. And you can see the motor, it isn't rotating anymore. The grounds of these probes, they are connected through this uh, oscilloscope. So I basically connect both coils in that stepper motor to each other through that scope. With the stuff I have here, it doesn't work. I have ordered a, um, a probe separator, which disconnects the grounds from uh, both probes. So I would be able to get two separate signals differential from each other, so they aren't connected to each other. 
And I'm still waiting for that part and I expect that part within a few days. Okay, I just have checked the status of that probe isolator and um, it turns out that it will take another week for it to arrive. I don't want to delay this video any further. I'm uh, just going to use one uh, side of that step motor driver and do the experiments with that. One of the suggestions that I've received is a short. Yeah. I'm going to measure the, um, the wave on the other side of that, uh, of that stepper motor. And to make it a bit more realistic, I'm going to raise that current. Around here will be 15 amps. The data sheet says shorted load protection. It didn't blow up and it's not spectacular hot. And the other call just works. I'm going to um, do the same thing with the speed of 5000. <laughs> Another thing that I've read was a short between one of these and ground. So let's try that. I just used the ground of the power supplies, same ground as this. Just to check to see if I've destroyed the stepper motor. It looks like I've destroyed the stepper motor. <laughs> and I've connected the scope to the other pair of that stepper motor driver to see if I have already destroyed the driver. Well here I have the proof that you shouldn't short one of these two wires because it will destroy the stepper motor driver. Okay, I've removed the connector and just connected these loose terminals to that uh, Y motor connector. So I can rearrange them and see um, what it does with the rotation. I've connected it in a normal way, so this is my baseline. Okay, it goes into a clockwise direction. So what do we have to do if we want to rotate it in a counterclockwise direction? One suggestion was to flip one coil. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to flip the red and the blue wire. And it indeed goes into a different direction. So it will make sense if I switch the other two, then it will change back. And it goes into the normal direction. So now I have twisted pin one and two, and I've twisted pin three and four. So indeed, if you swap one coil, then um, you can change the direction of the motor. Last thing I've read is to completely flip the whole connector. Indeed, counterclockwise. What could have gone wrong? It says it's, uh, it's protected against uh, short load protection. Well, it's yeah, it's not that protected. I have already destroyed one output. But what could have been this issue? And does the data sheet say it's protected against stupidity? Well, it says here actually. I just saw you changing that in Inkscape. Yeah. Yeah, okay. If you look at um, the connector of the N3, on the motor side, the middle two are twisted. I just um, put everything back, I thought, but I didn't twist the middle two. And that's the reason why that stepper driver has blown up. And it's still a bit odd why, because there isn't a short. Now yeah, let's find out what happens if I'm going to do that. <sighs> Okay, these are two ways to destroy a stepper motor driver. But how does this happen? You don't, sh nothing is shortened here. Before I'm going to tell you my theory, I'm going to do one more test because I still have one stepper motor driver left. <laughs> this board is somehow very silent. Yeah, I had the idea of um, using this uh, decibel meter to show how silent this actually is uh, compared to the stock uh, and the three board. But uh, it turns out that uh, teaching tech has uh, beaten me to it. I don't know what to do with this uh, thing anymore. But <laughs> 
Why is this thing more silent than that one? And I have a scope right there. And still one good stepper. <laughs> Moth FFT. All these spikes we can hear. So that's what made that is what, what's making noise. So here in the horizontal axis we have the frequency from 0 Hz to 20 kilohertz. So that's the range of what we can hear. And in this vertical axis we have the, the decibels. So the amplitude. Okay, and now I've connected the big 3 tag board. Yes, there is a huge difference between the spectrum of this big 3 tech and this standard Ender Creality board. All these, the, the spikes of this uh, thing is what this coil is uh, emitting and that's what we can hear. And the only spike with this board is all the way down here at 30 Hz. So you can hear that low noise. I still want to try if I can get the same effect with um, this Z-Stepper driver as I have had in my previous video. So let's try one more time to destroy the last stepper on this board. Okay, I've reconnected this board again and I have twisted the middle two wires. I'm going to hold the motor to get uh, a bit more current running through it. That's a bit of an anti-climax. Yeah, it smells, but it's not burning. I don't have any drivers left to test with, but I hope that you've learned a thing or two about this uh, somewhat more uh, informative video than, uh, than I usually have. Please leave a comment if you think that something wasn't clear or if I explained something wrongly, because I really want to learn from my mistakes. Please uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Stay a little longer so I can uh, explain what, uh, what went wrong. In this case, when twisting the middle two. If you don't care, then uh, just end the video. But uh, don't forget to hit that like button. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye. So current is still going from here through that first switch. And it must go through the f that coil of the motor and in Instead of going uh, through this uh, switch over here and uh, back in the normal way like this blue one does. Then it will go down through this second coil, through this resistor over here, through ground. This would be the worst case, going through two coils. So the current is uh, twice as high. Let's presume that the overcurrent protection works. So there is a lot of current flowing through here, through this resistor and this uh, sense says uh, how it's uh, high help this is the normal path and it should go through this resistor but there isn't any current running through this resistor so this sense doesn't sense anything and the microcontroller just uh, thinks uh, what uh, no current and yeah just goes uh, full pull I think that this is destroying that stepper motor driver. If you think it's something different or if you think uh, you know what what is really happening here then um, yeah, please leave a comment because I'm very curious and I really want to learn more from this. Well again see you in the next video. I hope you liked it. <laughs> Bye!